What's good, fam? Teacher Eddie. Another reaction, and this one's going to be a fucking disaster on all aspects. A lot of people have been requesting this reaction, but because my man Ken, my Discord brother from another mother, my platonic life mate asked me to do this reaction, I was like, you know what, for Ken... I will do this. Let's get into it. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of commentary and it should be a fun ride. <sighs> the Costa Concordia. Ship of dreams. It's been eight years. I can still it's smell been 84 the years. From their five restaurants. The casino and three story theater had hardly been used. Ah, the gym, the day spa, the sheets in her 1500 luxurious cabins hadn't even been slept in. Costa Concordia cost $570 million to build. And you could tell. You could really tell. Oh god damn. I, yo YouTube man, don't be don't be giving me a copyright uh cuz this motherfucker decided to use the uh that fucking uh Titanic song on this. Although it is fitting. Uh because this happened in 2012 and Titanic uh happened in 1912. Uh so it is kind of fitting, but still man. Uh but I do remember this and uh, I don't want there to be a misconception because a lot of people that I've spoken to over the years thought the uh, Concordia like it was kind of like exactly like the Titanic, like it it's uh, sank. Spoilers uh, that it sank on its maiden voyage, but the Concordia was actually um, in use for several years. It was uh, it was the first of its line, but then there were other. Concordia ships that, um, what was it, Carnival uh, Cruise Lines had, and uh, I believe it was also the largest, um, at least, cruise ship at the time, and so when this happened, like, this was all over the news, and then the fucking, but the best was the the trial with the, with the captain of the ship, I don't remember his name, but again, man, that dude was just like typecast like he was he was from casting central man we need a villain for this story we got the perfect one i remember it like it was just a few years ago we had left civitavecchia a port in rome and we were making our way to savona it was day two of our seven day journey but that ship Aye, she was cursed. Oh, my word. When she premiered, the traditional bottle of champagne bounced right off the side instead of smashing. A bad omen. But I'm not the superstitious type. Nothing could go wrong on Friday the 13th of January 2012, on the 100th year anniversary of the Titanic, on a ship that's also only safety rated for two compartment flooding. Especially not when you have a five-star max level captain. Oh god, there he is. There he is. I mean, look at that faccia bruta. Look at that faccia, that faccia de merde. I mean, this guy is totally unqualified, number one. But the amount of, like, you couldn't even, if you came to Lifetime with this story, even Lifetime would be like, nah, man, this is... This is way out there, man, for us. I mean, just stop it. Like Francisco Scatino, a man who mysteriously rose from head of security. Scatino, even his fucking name sounds like a villain's name. But we, we need a villain for this story. Let's, let's cast the Italian David Hasselhoff over here. Yeah, let's give him a name, Scatino. Perfect. Sounds like a piece of shit. Looks like a piece of shit. This is wonderful to the position of captain within just a couple of years. He knows exactly what to do in case of an emergency. For example, when he caused this emergency in 2008, when he crashed into a port in Sicily. And in 2010, in Vernemont, Germany, when he was steering a different ship and came into port too fast and caused another collision. 
How I've the fuck is this guy captaining anything? So let's set the scene. Like, bro, they take your license away after, like, uh, you know, a, a couple of DUIs. This motherfucker's, like, crashing crashing ships into shit. And they're like, eh, it's fine. It's okay. Don't worry about it. It's a beautiful evening. Holy People shit, it was Friday the 13th? Lives. That's Drinks crazy. The bar. Antonio Magnotta is playing piano at the restaurant. Oh, shit. Yo, for a second there, all I heard was Magnata, and I, I was like, Luca Magnata's on this ship too? Like, how doomed is this fucking ship? Luca Magnata's on the ship. Hide, hide your cats. Hide all the pussy on this ship, man. Luca Magnata's on the ship. Antonio Magnata. Okay. He looks like Pablo Escobar at the piano over here. Martin the Magician is setting up for his show. Of course, Martin the Magician. And the ship is setting up for a little detour. It's called a sail by salute. Basically, you get real close to the shore and honk the horn. The locals Why? hate it, but the customers love it, and it's a tradition. Do they? Scatino, the captain, comes into the dining hall with the lady, Dominica Samorton. <gasps> Remember? Th oh shit! I forgot about this chick. Oh my god. So so she was a uh, I believe she was, she was from Moldova. She she's a Moldovian uh, dancer or ballerina something. Has something to do with dancing. But uh he's married. So he's bringing his side piece along on this cruise, right? And that was another huge scandal because when when she was called to the trial, uh she was like, "I don't know what you're talking about." Uh, and then the judge threatened her and was like, you're going to go to jail. She was like, yeah, I was fucking him. Absolutely. I was fucking him. I was fucking him all over that ship. I was saluting his dick up and down, man. I was riding up and down that shaft the whole time. Jesus Christ. I forgot about this chick, man. I mean, she, she, she had a slamming body. Uh, she definitely has them crazy eyes though. That's crazy right there. This face because you'll be seeing a lot of it later. Scatino eats his dinner with her and socializes for a little while. Then he, Dominica, and the maitre d' Look at him, he even walks like a douchebag. They're heading to the bridge. It's time for that sail by salute. This time, they're going to get closer than ever. Just 1,500 feet from the island of Giglio. And how are they going to determine this distance? Well, of course, the captain is going to eyeball it. Apparently, it's not enough. Yes, because he's such a fucking expert. Jesus Christ, man. Common thing to do. Scatino turns to the fella steering, his helmsman, Jacob Russlebin. First interesting tidbit. Costa Crochier has hired Jacob from Indonesia at a rock bottom price. And he's a bit of a newbie to the job. In fact, his profession hitherto, a painter and a cleaner. It's his first time steering a massive ship and he's very excited. At least, we think he is. It's hard to tell because he doesn't speak English or Italian very well at all. What the fuck? What kind of job interview is this? Like, uh, alright, so, uh, yeah, you're gonna be a helmsman. Okay. I'll, uh, can I see your resume? Alright. Uh, so how much, uh, experience do you have with, uh, ships and steering ships? Uh, oh, uh, you, you don't speak English. Uh, well, that's okay. Uh, the captain's Italian. You speak Italian? You don't speak Italian. Um, can we get a translator? You ever been on a boat? You, you've never been on a boat. Um, have you taken a bath before? You've taken a bath? Perfect. Water's water, right? So, uh, you hired. What the fuck is it? It's in, isn't some like kind of like bootleg cruise line where you expect them to be cutting costs and shit. This is Carnival Cruises, man. Like, come on, man. I, fuck. Like, I didn't. I knew about the captain. I didn't know it was this bad, though. Jesus. Off to a good start. The second in command orders the helmsman to 290. Now, don't be confused by these numbers, they're just the degrees on a compass. At the same time, the captain whips out his cell phone and calls former captain Mario Polo oh, like whips out his on the island. cell phone. They chat about the safe distance to Giglio's shores. It's all very casual. Anyway, Mario says that the safe distance is between 0.3 and 0.4 miles from shore. Okay, so the captain had to call another captain to be like, um, 
what do you think of safe distances? This is like when Ringo Starr, if you ever see Ringo Starr, uh, I saw Ringo Starr in concert and Ringo, while playing the drums, has another drummer with him. And then I'm like, Ringo, then why are you playing the fucking drums? Just stop it. Just let the actual drummer drum. So the captain's got to be like, hold on. Let me call a uh, let me call a real captain. Uh, hello. Yeah. Uh, what, what's, what's a safe distance to do this drive by thing? Cause, uh, you know, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm trying to eyeball. It. Yeah. The captain is going all in. This is Balls not his first deep. sail by salute, so he's confident in what he's doing. We're going closer than we've ever been before. The captain's eyeballing it again. Hmm. New heading of 300, he tells the helmsman. Downstairs, Martin is about to cut his assistant in half. Oh and boy. of course, that means that there's already a lady inside this box. She's waiting for the queue, Don't and then she'll poke her legs out. Real magic's about to happen. More orders. Pulling gently to 310. Increase speed to 16 knots. Going this fast is going to be a fatal error. But before we talk about that, let's talk about another big problem. Hey, Language barrier. You because think? at this point, the captain says 325, but the helmsman relays 315. So the first officer intervenes and he goes, no, 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 335, which is also wrong. And then the captain clarifies, no, 325. The helmsman confirms 325. Their poor communication has them moving at a much wider angle than they think they are. However, the captain should and would know this, except for the next problem, complacency about procedure. The standard procedure of a ship this large is for the third officer to give exact positional coordinates every time the captain gives a new directional order. But they're not doing that. 3.30, he says. The helmsman relays 3.30. The ship reaches 16 knots. The captain then turns to the second officer and instructs him to go to the left wing. That's these things here, and they basically exist so you can get a better view over the whole vessel. A few seconds pass, and then the mood starts to turn. Scatino notices white foam of waves breaking against the rocks directly in front of him in the distance. The Costa Concordia, right now, is almost 700 meters closer to the rocks than it should be. Without deviation, there is going to be a that, direct... That is, that is not a short distance, neither. I mean, way to eyeball it, pal. Good job. Collision. Oh, shit! Scatino immediately oh, demands shit. the ship to start turning away. 335. Not enough. The captain shouts, 340. The captain yells, 350. Now, remember how I said that accelerating to 16 knots was a fatal error? Well, that's because it's made this ship incapable yeah, you can't of turn. such a drastic turn. Yeah, you can't make what that turn. Is understood. Here's an example. The front end is not working. You're turning, 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 and you're just going straight. You want to go over here, but you're going to end up over here. Exactly. So despite the order of 350, right now the bow is still only pointing at 327. Not nearly enough to miss the rock. And oh no, it's about to get worse. That oh, language barrier. But wait, there's more. In these critical moments where every second counts, the helmsman wrongly relays 340. The captain snaps back 350 starboard, or we end up on the rocks. The third officer goes to assist the helmsman. Now, don't get confused by the orders from here. We're changing over to rudder instructions. The captain yells, starboard 10, starboard 20. And still, it's not enough. Hard to starboard. That means yeah, and, and meanwhile, meanwhile, uh, the the Indonesian guys like uh, starburst, starburst. Hold on, I think I have starburst. No starboard, starburst. Wait, starburst. It's as hard as it'll go. But at this point, even if they clear these rocks, they need to get the rest of the ship to swing around it. So the captain yells midship, which centers the rudder. The bow is now less than 150 meters from Skull Rock. Port 10. But the helmsman only gets to port 5 before another order is given two seconds later. Port 20. They might just avoid disaster here, maybe. But then, oh no. One more time, the helmsman cocks up at the worst possible moment. The helmsman goes to starboard instead of port, undoing the swing. 
Eight seconds later, he realizes the error and corrects, but it's Eight two seconds, seconds later. He has just turned a probable near miss into a sure hit. All they can do now is hold on as the bow of the ship narrowly passes by the rocks. Hard to port. The second officer yells, we're gonna hit. Collision. Jesus. Uh, starburst? No. Hard to port. Har harder port? Oh, port. You like a wine. Port wine. <laughs> Jesus. Martin awkwardly pauses his act as he's helping his assistant into the box. Meanwhile, get in the, the fucking box. Is out, out. What's in the box? There's confusion across the ship. All of the crew off shift come back on duty. All officers run to the bridge. Technical crews run down to the lower decks to assess damage. On connection with the rocks, they lose propulsion and slow to 8.3 knots. And they are now adrift. Close the watertight doors at stern. Enormous volume. Like if this was a Fast and Furious movie, this shit would work. Uh, yeah, Tokyo Drift. Yeah, don't worry about it. Because we got family. ...of water are pouring in. So much so that within 29 seconds of collision, all six engines stop working through flooding. Damn, that was quick. 22 seconds later, a blackout happens. Lights, electrics, the water pumps. And the magician's like, ta-da! Magic. To everything. The captain orders the helmsman hard starboard. This is the final position of the starburst. Starboard. Hard starburst. What kind of starboard? Taste the rainbow. Skittles. The rudder before power to that too is lost. The Costa Concordia, now without power, is drifting starboard, plunged into absolute darkness. God, that must have been terrifying. A quick breakdown of the flooding. When the Concordia struck land, it tore open three watertight compartments. At first, compartment five, which filled very rapidly. Then six, more slowly, four shortly after. Then seven, eight, and three. Modern ships are built to withstand two compartment breaches. These compartments especially, though, are a problem because they contain the engines and the electrics. These main generators give power to the whole ship. From propulsion motors to rudder to hotel functions, pretty much everything. When they went out, the ship was a functionless sinking cage. Oh, so so they couldn't have even later, the they couldn't have chosen a worse spot to 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 impact on the ship as well. Like everything's landing perfectly here, if by perfect uh, the worst possible scenario. Emergency batteries for internal lighting and communications kick on. When the lights come back on, Martin has vanished. He's ditched the stage. And it caused a huge panic in the theater as passengers are trying to flee to their- He's like, why? Well, I just made myself disappear. What are you talking about? Cabins and to muster stations. People already in their cabins come out and start putting on life vests. Staff rally and try to calm everyone down. Everything is fine. There's no need for- <laughs> Yeah, everything's this. fine. Please no, return no, to No, 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 ignore, ignore the, the fire over here. Stuff. Everything's good. <laughs> All of the watertight doors close except for door 12, which is jammed. The of Captain course it is. The chief engineer, as the ship begins to list on the port side. There's water. I, I was I was waiting for fucking uh, Indonesian Pete to be close doors. Open doors. No, close the doors. Okay, open the doors. No, close the fucking doors. Doors. Uh, doors. Uh, Jim Morrison. Jim Morrison. Uh, uh, come on, baby, let my fire. They're coming in? Yes, there's water. But where? The engine room. But a lot of water? <laughs> yes! <laughs> there's water. You can't a lot of water? Down. Let's go down the other side. In a moment, we'll start the pumps. I'll let you know. In the theater, the whole magic box apparatus slides right off the stage and falls into the crowd. What happened to the poor Further fucking chick who was in there? On the bridge, an announcement is being prepared. They are going to lie to prevent a panic. No, oh, let's just say we have a blackout. The deputy chief engineer enters the engine control room. He confirms to the bridge that at least compartments five, six, and seven are flooded. Announcements are made. 
Oh shit, it's Bruce Buffer. Bruce Buffer. electrical fault, which is currently under control. We're currently in a blackout. Our technicians are working to resolve the situation and we'll inform you of developments as they occur. Thank you for your attention. Uh... What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Ed I mean, that would not make me comfortable at all. Because I'd be like, man, this ain't no, what you're talking about, electrical problem. I just heard a loud fucking crash, the ship's shaking, then everything fucking goes pitch black. What the fuck are you talking about? God damn. Coincidentally, at the same time in the restaurant, they're playing My Heart Will Go On. And it's of very course they are. The situation. The captain calls the they Costa Crisis Unit. Roberto Ferrarini. He tells the crisis unit that they've hit a rock, that they're assessing damages, and that they are also in a blackout. The crisis office says to reverse the ship up onto shore. Well, how are you going to do that? You don't have power to the rudder, let alone the engine. You know, hoist the sails? Anyway, around this time, the wind direction... Wait a second. So the captain of the ship, instead of calling, I don't know, like... Uh, you know, the harbor chief, uh, the fucking Coast Guard, the army, Jack Bauer, I don't know, call somebody. He's calling the crisis hotline. So it's like when I lose my debit card, I'm like, uh, let me call Chase. Uh, you know, let, let me, let me call the hotline. Hold on. Yeah. I, I got plenty of time. He's like on hold and shit. Uh, it, it, it's a... It, you sure it's a lot of water? Like, what's a lot of water? How's the damage? It's bad? Oh, uh, yeah, hello? Yeah, crisis hotline? Yeah, we got a little bit of a problem here. Uh, all of the engines are down. Is that a bad thing? Hold on, maybe I should call the, uh, maybe I should call the other captain again. Like, what the fuck? Don't they have, like, an actual, like, emergency procedure here? He's calling the 800 line. He's calling the fucking toll-free number. Around this time, the wind direction creates a starboard list, and the ship begins to turn anyway, drifting right back towards the shore, which is a very good thing because you want the ship to end up as close to shore as possible. A panicked passenger senses that something is off. This isn't like any electrical problem that she's ever seen. Plus, there was a massive crashing noise, and now the ship is tilting. So, she contacts her daughter in Italy. Her Me daughter, daughter. Then calls the police. And the police call the harbour master. Finally! While that goes on, a conversation between Pilon and Ambrosio. The diesel is not starting. The captain asks the engine room, but where have we made contact? Thinking that the incoming water can be reduced. Captain, here everything is lost. The electrical panel, everything. They're saying at this point that the ship... I, I love the fact that it took a passenger who's like, uh, yeah, this doesn't seem like a fucking electrical problem. I'm not buying into this. Like, like as soon as she hears the announcement, after the announcement's done, like, she's like, no, this is bullshit. This is, this is no fucking electrical problem. But they said everything, everything was fine. Bullshit! The, 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 the ship is tilting. There was a loud fucking crash. Yeah, but they said it's just an electrical. Shut the fuck up. I'm calling me daughter. And the daughter's like, I'm calling the cops. Like, the cops are going to go down there and be like, yeah, we'll go check it out. They call the harbor master, and then the harbor master's like, this sounds like bullshit. Like, it took a passenger to do this instead of the cat. The captain's kind of sitting there like, surprise, motherfucker. He's like, oh, wait, is it, is, it, is it that bad? Are you sure? So, so, you, so you're saying we're fucked? Yeah, Captain, we're fucked. That's a technical term. Is going down. The Captain calls Roberto Ferrarini again. Uh, He's actually, calling the 800 line again. Flooded. But don't worry, the ship's stability isn't in danger. Wrong. Passengers begin going to muster stations on their own initiative. The cruise director says, We have a lot of people at muster stations that I do not want to fall overboard. Do we make an announcement to tell them to go to the lounges? Bozio says, I think that's best. The harbor master from Livorno. Oh yeah, the guy. The guy's like, ah, oh, yeah. This this captain. Uh, 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 he's like, look at me, look at me. I'm the captain now. Because the captain is, uh, the captain has no clue what the fuck's going on. Calls the ship. The captain tells them that we we just have a blackout. How long has this blackout been going on? Are you kidding me? About twenty minutes. 
have you asked passengers to put on life vests? It, it's just a blackout. I, I gotta go. The harbour master is suspicious. He says to you his think? that he thinks something more is going on. He calls a patrol boat to the area and asks them to look at the ship. Another problem. The fan on the emergency de- Yeah, he's like, uh, yeah, this captain sounds like he's full of shit. Like, even the harbour master was like, Yo, something's going on here. And he's like, uh, you mind taking a look? Uh, yeah, the ship's tilting. Uh, could be an electrical problem, though. I'm no expert here. Diesel generator isn't working properly. Pilon manually has to turn the thing on and off with a screwdriver so that it doesn't overheat wow. and cause a fire. The captain is on the phone to the lower decks, asking pointless questions like, is it still flooded? Yes. Yes, it is. The captain is essentially in denial of the situation. Wow. The harbour master calls again. Finally, he says, The ship is taking on water through an opening in the left side and the ship is listing. He qualifies with, No one dead or injured. The harbour master asks if he needs help. Just a tug boat. When in reality, they need a full rescue. With three Yes, a full rescue. It's not like you blew with tires like, uh, Yeah, can you send me a tow? Yeah, send a tugboat. What's a tugboat gonna do? You might as well dig up Tugboat, the old wrestler. Like, he'll, he'll be just as useful in this situation. It's like when Joe Pesci kills uh, Maury in the car, and then fucking Carbone is sitting there like, eh, wait, I gotta let the car warm up. He's like, what fucking warm up the car? I should've let him fucking drive and he's dead. The captain finally realizes that things are really bad, and they are not finally. going to improve. The Coast Guard, Coast Guard orders every available ship to the scene. Meanwhile, up with the passengers, the cruise director's assistant says, uh, everything's under control. Please return to your cabins or hang about in the lounges, no problem. She said this yeah, play some shuffleboard. and that it further endangered lives. Most passengers at this point, though, aren't listening to this nonsense, and they're busy figuring out how to abandon ship. Bing, 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 bing. Local television has already picked up the story and they begin broadcasting live radio feed from the bridge. Hey, couple. Captain, the passengers are going on board the boats. Okay, let them go to shore. So then general emergency? Wait, nah. let me talk to Ferrarini. We risk the emergency generators that do not have cooling. It has cooling problems, 100 degrees. The cooling fan has stopped. All right, so this motherfucker cannot perform under pressure, obviously. Like, I'm gonna just, he's calling the 800 line again. Uh, he's like, uh, Captain, what should, hold on, I'm on, I'm on hold. I'm on hold. What should we do, Captain? Uh, hold. I'm on hold with the 800 line. Hold on. L let me, l let me call the, let me call the other captain again. Maybe, maybe he, he can help out. Uh, oh, we're fucked. Okay, we're fucked. We're fucked, people! Elon calls the bridge and tells the safety officer they need to evacuate. The safety officer relays this to the captain, but after no response, he orders the engine room to evacuate on his own. The captain says, no, stay. We're leaving. So what do we do? General emergency? <laughs> The captain tells Ferrarini that he's abandoning ship. Abandon ship. Another announcement is made. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. The situation is under control. Please remain calm. But at this time, proceed to your master station. They're located outside on deck four. The Livorno Coast Guard calls again. The captain declares distress. The Coast Guard officially calls for rescue operations. They contact Pietro Mille, the helicopter base commander, who then calls in every available pilot as he rushes down to the helicopter base. Pilon shuts down the emergency generator for the final time. The first rescue vessel arrives. By this point, the lifeboats are already going. Luckily, the ship is very close to shore. Oh, perhaps too close to shore. The ship forcefully runs aground, creating an uneven center of gravity and it begins heavily listing starboard. The captain issues a general emergency on board. The announcement to abandon ship is finally called and alarms ring out. And with that comes panic. And now that they're listing, with many of the lifeboats too awkwardly positioned to enter the water, there aren't enough readily available and they have to start going back and forth to the shore, picking- Oh my God. Not enough readily available uh, lifeboats. Sounds familiar. Nothing changed in a hundred years. Uh, uh, get them on the lifeboats. Um, yeah, they're... Mm. 
people up and dropping them off. Jeez. The patrol boats report to the Livorno Harbour Master that the ship has run aground and is listing heavily. So the harbour master asks the captain about it, and the captain says, no, 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 the ship is still floating. Uh, in fact, we're trying to manoeuvre it onto the shore. They know he's lying. Hold on, I'm reversing it. Beep, 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 beep. The captain <laughs> says to bottom out the starboard oh my anchor. God. So they drop out the anchors, but let out too much chain, effectively rendering them useless. The deputy mayor of Giglio, Mario Pellegrini, and tobacco shop Pellegrini, of Rossi, course, arrive at the harbour. They watch the scene unfold. As the first of the lifeboats arrive on shore, the deputy mayor takes the initiative and races to board one of the lifeboats, returning to the ship, and starts trying to find someone in charge. He gives up and starts helping passengers. Scatino tells everyone to leave and take radios, but not before changing out of his uniform and into a nice suit. Priorities. Dimitri Christidis and Sylvia Koronica leave with him. Are you fucking kidding me right now? This motherfucker took the time out. He didn't have time to uh, call the Coast Guard, uh, to call the Harbor Master, to call the National Guard, to call uh, Jack Bauer, to call Vin Diesel, like nothing. But, but, he had time to change into a suit. Uh... This fucking guy. No wonder, man. Like, I am so glad this bitch is in jail. And I hope he's getting fucking railed like a motherfucker in jail. Like, this guy is... Because you're an emotional fucking cripple. Your soul is dog shit. Every single fucking thing about you is ugly. Yep. The maitre d' and some more both get out of there. By this point, approximately 300 people are still on the ship. Melee reaches the helicopter base. This motherfucker abandoned ship with, with, with people still. No, the captain is the last person. Uh, that's right. I remember during the trial. That was one of the big things. He abandoned fucking ship while there were still passengers on board. This motherfucker. Jesus Christ. The first helicopter, a slow moving Augusta Bell, was already rising from the tarmac for the hour long flight south. Bozio is the last crew member left on the bridge, coordinating evacuation. He then leaves to help passengers board lifeboats. The bridge is now abandoned. And then, the ship's black box stops working. Apparently there were technical problems with it. Oh, you that think? Means from here, things are going to get a little foggy in detail. A while later, rescue helicopters arrive, but they're struggling to find the ship because they're expecting it to still be well above water. Passengers are scaling down the port side by ladder as lifeboats return to oh, pick them up. Oh, jeez. This is not, not joke. Oh my goodness. This is not, not joke anymore. Yes. You're not allowed to make a film I'm, movie. I'm allowed, I'm allowed. Who say you are? A second. Oh, this bitch is now, now this bitch is gonna give orders. She's like, you're not allowed. You're not allowed to make movie. Bitch, man, you you not allowed to to number one be a home wrecker, and number two, man, mind your business and mind your man. Man, now this bitch is gonna open up her mouth and start giving orders, man. Man, shut the fuck up, Yoko. Helicopter, a faster model, sets off. The ship stops healing and comes to a final resting place. Now the coast guard calls the captain because he's just learned that the captain has abandoned ship. The captain claims, uh, uh, no, actually, I slipped and I fell into one of the lifeboats. Ooh, I'm close. But now that I'm on board, I, I may as well head back to shore. DeFalco tells the captain to get the fuck back on board. And the captain kind of acts confused and then effectively refuses. So the captain makes it to shore. From here, we only have mainstream news reports to rely on, so it's not going to be super accurate. But they say that Giglio's police chief then finds 110 survivors on the rocks at Point Gabianara. And among them is the captain. It's not known whether the captain helped anyone while he was there. And in no, fact, the police chief claimed that, motherfucker that he didn't help sat no on one. the rocks and watched other people do the rescuing. What a while a later, piece a rescue boat shit. picks up the captain and takes him to the harbor. He speaks to the police. He then finds the ship's onboard chaplain, Father Rafael Molina, and cry to him for about 15 minutes. <laughs> then he goes to the harbor master's office to receive probably the biggest dressing down of his entire life. Port authorities ask the taxi driver to take the captain back to his hotel. 
the captain takes the 30-second cab ride to the Bahamas Hotel. According to the cabbie, he was beaten like a dog. He was cold and afraid. He only asked me where he could buy a pair of fresh socks. <laughs> That's his big concern, right? Fucking people died. You, you, and, and your poor fucking decision making. Well, there was, there was no decision making on your part. I, I mean, this, were, this is worth repeating right here. Because you're an emotional fucking cripple. Your soul is dog shit. Every single fucking thing about you is ugly. Yep. Socks. He needs a fresh pair of socks. <laughs> but then he perked right up again and gave an interview to a news crew. He told them that he was the last to leave. The captain is usually the last to abandon ship. What happened, Captain? We were the last to leave the ship. All they said, they really Well, technically, um, the, the area, I, I, I was the last to leave. And by last, I mean uh, probably one of the first. Yeah, yeah. Rescue a search for people on the ship. On Sunday morning, a South Korean couple is found in their cabin, safe but shivering. They had slipped through the crash and woke up unable to exit their cabin. God the damn, survivor, man. Manrico Giampandroni was found with. Yo, that is some um, heavy ass sleeping. Like the ship's crashing, the, the, there's chaos everywhere. And these, these two, this couple's like. With a broken leg, he was the cabin's service director. In the end, 32 people died. Wow. The final body wasn't discovered until nearly three years later. Oh a my crew God. member, Russell Rebello. And it's believed that he died a hero, helping passengers off the ship. The Costa Concordia oh. was the largest cruise ship disaster since the Titanic. And then there's the ship. This is what happens to a 110,000 oh ton cruise ship when it's left half rolled over in the ocean. Wow. Fucking goosebumps, man. This is just so infuriating. Oh. 33 people had to fucking die. Because you, you couldn't get people who can speak the same fucking language. Or, or, or a captain who knew the, what the fuck he was doing. But this isn't the end. It's just the halfway point. Oh, but what wait, there's more. Know is that the Costa Concordia had crashed, many dead, and then the captain abandoned ship like a coward. But there's a whole veritable spaghetti of details to untangle. Let's dive in. What in are. the fuck? The deets. Oh, okay. <gasps> oh, yes. I remember this, yep. Loot box time. The Costa Concordia was more than just a floating resort. There's a mall. A casino. Cha-ching, cha-ching. This iron chest was full of safes and cash registers and expensive fittings. And there were plenty of gamers prepared to sneak by authorities yep. and try their luck I remember in this. the hot zone. Within days, police divers reported that valuable items, once seen lying around the ship, were now missing. High-end liquor, expensive furniture, dining sets, cash from the casino, cash registers, jewelry and display cabinets, safes, Japanese woodblock prints by famous 18th century artists, what does it do? no. as well as the iconic bell, which hung from the bridge of the ship. It was never found. Who the f Who steals a big fuck-off bell? Even the server admins were getting involved. Four divers who were part of the company contracted to refloat the Concordia were spotted on CCTV, sneaking out to the ship. A patrol boat was dispatched, and the men were caught inside the fancy suites with rucksacks full of stolen goods. The four men are charged with stealing and thieving and pinching. Later on, stolen as well as legitimate items found their way to Amazon and eBay. Chips from the casino, postcards, and cabin access cards became highly sought after souvenirs. Yep. It even has a watermark. Some Australian guy. Yeah, I mean, people's greed is just knows no bounds. 
because also you got to remember all the uh, all the passengers uh they didn't have time to like gather up their shit uh so another thing that i remember um was a lot of people's personal belongings their jewelry uh cash pretty much everything they left on board uh was also looted um and then of course there was a a huge payout um like apparently like the between uh, the cost of the ship and everything else like it cost the company like some like two billion dollars i think uh because they also had to pay um uh passengers even though the passengers didn't get a lot of money um considering what they had to go through like it's just terrible i even made a listing for the ship itself advertising it as buyer to collect and although there were plenty of bidders ebay pulled the plug I know you want to see Scatino go to jail, and we'll get to that. But first, we have to talk about someone else. Dominica Yes. Samor. That was a close one. There was speculation that she was on the bridge that evening because she was the captain's mistress. Tense media speculation reports that her presence distracted the captain. They both denied their love for years and maintained that they were just friends. Although, she did later admit to the media that she found him handsome. And how could you not? You so fucking precious when you smile. But she says there was no romantic link between them. Some people would like to believe, they want to know I have something with him, it's more interesting, it's like, you know, some... You can make a movie? Because we make a movie, we make a fuck movies. Oh god. Spicy, Spicy. in the story. Miss Morton also loved the spotlight, however. Oh, everyone! Oh, look! And took several interviews. But as the Fucking pressure mounted upon her, she you began know what? making ominous... I'm sorry, usually I don't, but you know what? Fucking bitch! Fuck you! And not in a good way. Threats to Scatino. Saying he must confess. And that you have but one week to come clean. But things from here get weird. Spicy. Some more. Yeah, please. There was a lot of coming, but I don't think it was clean, lady. I hope you get the fucking clap. I hope you get the gonorrhea. I hope you get all the drips. There's a bit of a wild card. <laughs> In a subsequent interview, she claimed a helicopter came to the ship well before the other rescue craft to take away a package. Huh? And what was that package? Drugs, apparently. So rumors began that the ship was running narcotics for the Mafia. And not without cause, a number of cruise ships, even recently, have been caught trafficking drugs. As an aside, Scudino was tested for drugs immediately after the crash. He tested negative for drugs in his system, but trace amounts of cocaine were found in a hair sample. Makes it smoother and less dry. Nonetheless, the Concordia was- Yeah, he also tested negative for brain. They didn't find any brains whatsoever on this cocksucker. Was searched and no drugs were reportedly ever found. How did we get here? Oh right, a helicopter. Simulton commented on it again the next day and said, actually, that helicopter was just for the captain as a means of evacuation from the ship. Okay, wait. So she expected to get some sort of first class rescue while everyone else was still stuck on the ship? Wait, how did we well, get of course. here? Oh right, sex with the captain. Divers were quick to head to the captain's cabin where they found Miss Simorton's lingerie and other articles of clothing as well as a makeup bag. The jig was up, but they continued denying it. Simorton mostly faded from international attention until she was told to appear before the court to present witness testimony. The judge pressed her to be truthful about their relationship, or she would be held in contempt. Either tell me the truth or shut up. So finally, she admitted it. See. Si. Yes, I had a sentimental relationship with the captain. Sentimental. Stop. But now, stop asking about my private life. Oh, you fucking, you, oh God. You, you miss fucking, uh, uh, clout chasing, scumbag fucking whore. Whore. She was a whore. You got the nerve to be like, 
you grant in interviews you you expecting like the 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 ships going down people are dying and you want like uh, the, where where the sh where the champagne toast and the caviar and the helicopter uh to get us off this like who the fuck you think you are what are you karen hill jesus and then she's like oh but stop asking me questions about my private life i don't want all this media attention now she was indeed the captain's lover what is up trouble alert nation city no she did i'm his wife with c more can oh my god she and scatino had been having an affair for several weeks this is why i hate a lot of reactors like i mean i know like i get animated and shit but then there's like the the yeah a little, little too much she also said that on the night she boarded, she didn't have a ticket. Ticket, please. And didn't need to pay because nobody questions you when you're the captain's lover. Naturally, she yeah. gave another. Her ticket was the fact that his cock was board. in a pussy I want at the to time. Say that today is the second time I die because the first time I die in the night of the crush with my psychological brain and uh, problems. You got the nerve. Yeah, exactly. Like it says on the top of the screen. That's the first thing I thought. People actually fucking died. And you have the nerve to be like, no, this is the second time I die. God damn, you know what? I know, I know people get pissed when I do this, but you know what? I wish you did die. Well, you know what? I wish one of those innocent fucking people actually were alive and you could trade places with them. Because you are fucking human excrement, lady. And today I died the second time. Go fuck yourself. Because, of course, people find out something that I try to hide. Subsequent to the trial, she used her this fame wasn't in a Maldova huge shock to become a political activist, often appearing on television and radio. And in man, and you, protests, bitch, you did not age well, pictures. neither. You did not age well at all. You weren't that. I mean, you got a slamming body because you were a dancer, but your face, not so much, not so much. I mean, of course, fucking uh, knockoff David Hasselhoff uh, was in love with you because he was like twice your age. Because she was in her twenties at the time. This bitch did not age well at all, man. She aged pretty much like the fucking Concordia, you know, laying there for like uh, a few years, tilted on the side. Of her being arrested by police. It was some stuff about. Wait, wait, wait. She was protesting about trash bins? Look, there's trash everywhere. Yeah, I'm looking right at it, lady. You want to see trash? Look in the mirror. This is the biggest piece of trash I've ever seen. Uh, did you die a third time now? Why don't you die for real? Victims, violence, women's rights. Get this bitch out of here, man. And interestingly, part of a push to block the sale of shares of Moldova's train network to Russia. Sure, it's sure. Get this oh, bitch out of here, I don't really Seriously. know what she's been up to. Let me just I, I, I don't care. Her. I don't care. No, God, not again. Oh, Jesus. Get her, get her the fuck out of here, please. Several civil suits were quickly lodged against Costa Crochier, and their parent company, Carnival Cruises, immediately saw a share drop of 23%. Don't beat. Passengers sought compensation for their damaged mental health. As well they should. And loved ones. Either they allowed him to divert from his course, or they didn't know where their billion dollar ship was. Within a few days, facing financial and media pressure, the CEO attempted to join the bandwagon against the captain and the crew. That was not the ordinary route that the ship was uh, taking uh, at the time and, and was not only taking, but the time the, the ship Today, was... Junior? Claiming that the ship... Yeah, still, uh, again, you know. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Yeah. 
the, the, the ship, uh, uh, you know, uh, George uh, Washington uh, Bridge, uh, was this guy who fucking interviewed uh, uh, the Indonesian dude, uh, Starburst, Starburst, right? Port, you want the wine, wine, Starburst, Skittles, taste the rainbow. Ship was not approved to deviate from the route, but that wasn't true. Approval isn't required if the ship is deviating by less than 15 miles, or that it was against company rules. Also untrue, because investigators found that they didn't have any rules about deviating route, and they tacitly encouraged sail by salutes. Now, in response to the civil suits, Costa Crociere offered passengers 11,000 euros each as compensation. Yeah. That's kind of small. 11,000 euros, about $14,000, is the minimum compensation under international law when a ship is abandoned. This was to reimburse them for their tickets, as well as any costs they accrued in having to unexpectedly travel home early. And that was supposed to release them from everything and anything no. that has to do with this accident. Bullshit. I cannot ask for more than this. A lot of passengers, understandably, we're not too happy with this deal, and they refuse to take the money. We think the offer is an insult for what these poor passengers went through. We think Truth. the compensation being offered is not commensurate. Here. Take it. Go ahead. Compensation being offered is not commensurate. <laughs> Later, Costa Crociere would lodge a plea deal with the Tuscany court to pay a 1 million euro fine to avoid a criminal trial. The judge agrees. Costa Crociere is now off the hook for all criminal liability for the whole thing. Wow. They've washed their hands of the incident and flexed the residual drop. I mean, look, at the end of the day, yes. The captain, the Indonesian dude, like all these motherfuckers should go to jail, okay? But the fact that the actual company that's in charge, that put this fucker in charge of this ship, that, that hired people who don't speak the language, who were fucking house painters before this. The fact that they just pay a, a, a million euro fine and they're all like that, that's a drop in the bucket for a multi billion dollar company. Like, that's what's wrong with this fucking world. This video is so goddamn infuriating. I just want to punch like a baby right now. That's how angry I am. Members. Passengers and relatives of the dead are livid that the company has been able to avoid criminal responsibility. I'm livid. Is not commensurate. Civil suits against the company continue. By the way, the residents of the island of Giglio also banded together and sought damages. They didn't get much. Well, that's, that's, you could fuck off. Eventually, passengers who refused the initial compensation of 11,000 joined civil parties against Scatino in his trial in 2015. It's not commensurate. They were awarded 30,000 euros each. Other cases, especially those involving lost relatives, are settled for undisclosed amounts. How do you put a price on a human life? New York attorney Peter Rene traveled to Budapest to represent six real survivors of the disaster. At Rene and Rene, we personally work on every case. And we'll work harder than anyone to get you the most money possible in the oh, shortest God. amount of time. And while on the job, a seventh case cropped up via mail. email. An elderly we'll get woman, you the most. said, Help me, Mr. Ronai, for I have lost my daughter, Eva, and my five-year-old granddaughter, Roxana. No. So Mr. Ronai agreed Please, to speak don't. with her. However, no. there were some inconsistencies no. in her story. Neither Eva nor Roxana were on the passenger list. Odd. But Costa is known for having stowaways. Still, Mr. Renai was suspicious. They wouldn't cheaty old Petey, would they? Renai inquired further about why she was on board, especially without a ticket. Ilona said, Well, I don't know, but you should ask her boyfriend. Zolt Horvath. Oh my god. He'll know all the details. I'm up all night. I'm going crazy, he said. But Mr. Renai was still suspicious. Because then she asked, How much money do you think this is worth? Uh Cause you're an emotional fucking cripple. Your soul is dog shit. Every single fucking thing about you is ugly. This is as bad as that fucking woman who claimed to be a survivor of 9-11 and would attend uh survivor groups and everything, and turns out she was nowhere near the building. What how like what kind of fucking piece of shit human being do you have to be 
You're not even human at that point. You're not even a fucking animal. You're a walking fucking skin suit just full of, I mean, to, to, to try and make money off a tragedy like this when people, when actual people died, how much do you think this is worth? This is a huge red flag, Petey. In 20 years of doing this, you've never had anyone ask about money. Why now? So Mr. Renai hired an investigator and sent photos around of the missing girl. The next day, the phone rang. Oh, hoi hoi. It was the boyfriend again. Ah, uh, look, there's been a bit of a misunderstanding and the child isn't missing at all. Uh-huh. And then he claimed he was confused because he had done too many drugs the night before. <laughs> oh. Okay. Okay, can I speak to the daughter then? At first, he was refused. So Renai said that he'd have to file a missing persons report to the police if he couldn't. The boyfriend relented. That night, Renai met with Zolt and brought the police with him. He speaks to the granddaughter and asks her if she's seen mum. Yeah, I saw her today. Oh, really? Yeah, we went to the park today and we went on the swings. Oh no, the jig was up. So the mum walks into the room sheepishly. It's a miracle! And the story changed again. Okay, I'm not dead, but I did injure me leg when I jumped from the ship. And then I immediately flew back to Budapest. Although, don't worry about checking my leg, because there are no visible marks or injuries. Uh, old Petey, I'm beginning to think they weren't even on the boat. Also, it turns out this lady isn't her mum, it's just a neighbour. Eventually, Renee managed to make the pair confess. And then they said, hey, we haven't done anything wrong. We haven't taken any money. And in the end, it looks like there'll be no criminal punishment for the scam. Because Hungary, a former communist country, has no laws against insurance fraud on the books. The law firm that never sleeps, call 1-800-664-7. Yeah, like, they're, like the lawyer, I thought the lawyers were going to be the ones pulling the scam, but the lawyers actually went above and beyond to prove that these people were full of shit. So, kudos to the fucking lawyers. Oh, that's a bad idea. Oh, that's a very bad idea. Please don't tell me there's going to be anything worse. I don't think I could take any more. Mario, would you teach me some Italian? Oh, of course! Means Get back on board for fuck's sake. Okay, thanks. Gregorio De Falco, the naval officer who shouted at Scatino to Vada a bordo caso, became a bit of a national hero overnight in Italy. He, like the rest of the world, expected Scatino to go down with the ship. And when the captain chickened out, DeFelco was there to admonish him. And when he stopped answering the radio, he called him on his cell phone to continue putting him on blast. When the captain first wait, 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 what did he say? Blast, I will really hurt you. I will cause you a boatload of trouble. <laughs> yeah, seriously, man. I'm gonna fuck you up, man. I'm gonna beat the shit out of you, man. I'm gonna kick you until you dent my fucking shoes. Fucking mud dented my shoes. When the captain first reported just a blackout, DeFelco didn't believe the story and immediately began preparing a rescue effort, which likely saved several lives. His actions were applauded by most Italians who were tired of their public servants being corrupt and avoiding responsibility. Accordingly, shirts sporting Vada a bordo caso were being printed by the end of the week, others setting it as their phone's ringtone. But then, in September 2014, without warning, DeFalco was transferred to an admin role in the Coast Guard. Why? DeFalco said that he had been passed up for promotion, that he had also not been told which admin office he was even being transferred to, and that it all effectively cancelled 10 years of his career. DeFalco was Tres Furioso, and there was public speculation that it was owing to bad blood between himself and Admiral Delano his former boss. His status among the public overshadowed his superior in many ways. On the other hand, his boss said, ah, no, it's part of a normal career progression for naval officers and that he must show more maturity and professionalism to Don't fuck yourself, career. Toad. Now, it's hard to know what's true in office politics, so let's leave that alone. And anyway, in 2018, DeFelco said buenas noches, ya later, to the Italian Navy to become a politician. In March that year, he was elected to the Italian Senate, serving as a member for Livorno. He still serves there today. Good. I'm the company now. 
The day after the disaster, Scatino was taken into custody by police and underwent questioning. However, it was clear that this would not be a straightforward investigation. Oh, so at least he got to change into a suit. ...at his home in Sorrento, a town in Napoli. By July of that year, the house arrest was relaxed and he was allowed within this general area. While under house arrest, he wrote a book with this journalist from Rai magazine. I have no idea what it says, I don't speak Italian. But goddammit, he must have some kind of charisma going on, because there's been a lot of speculation in the press that he had an affair with her as well. You can't keep getting away with it! Hold on, I got it, I got it. Not content with abandoning his ship, this dude is determined to abandon his wife as well. So, Scatino and five others are facing criminal charges. Straight away, everyone lodges a plea bargain with the court, and all of those plea bargains are accepted, except for Scatino's. And the condition of everyone's reduced sentences are that they must provide witness testimony against Scatino. He touched me. Ciro, Jacob, and Sylvia were all given God suspended damn. sentences. Roberto and Manrico are able to opt for community service or house arrest. Not a bad deal. A good deal. A good deal. And that meant that Scatino was now all on his own. Ciro, the first officer, was the first to give his testimony. On the witness stand, he claimed that Scatino was distracted by his mistress and other guests on the bridge. Then there was confusion over who was in command. Then it was Jacob's turn. And he said, Lamau XD, because he didn't actually bother with his testimony or his reduced sentence. He just fled the country. It took authorities 12 months to eventually track him down on the outskirts of Jakarta. And when they said, Oi, we still want that witness testimony. He just scalped again, and he hasn't been found since. Oh, wow. After that, Ferrarini gave his testimony. This mother... So, uh, so fucking, fucking Skittles over here, Mr. Starburst, he put he pulled a fucking uh, 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 D.B. Cooper over here. We don't have time to relitigate the whole trial, so let's just go straight to the verdict. Guilty! Scatino was found guilty of multiple manslaughter, causing a shipwreck, abandoning ship, and lying to authorities. He is sentenced to 16 years and one month. That's it? But wait, there's still the appeals. The appeals trial begins. And the verdict Just take on the, the appeal... Surprise! Rejected! So Scatino's lawyers appealed again. And the verdict on the final appeal... Scatino made multiple attempts to secure a plea deal, but was denied. Oh, come on. You, you, you could do better than that. Hold on. Let me, let, let me help you out. There you go. By the prosecution each time. The prosecution called for Scatino to be sentenced to 26 years in prison, calling the incident a titanic affair. Oh, okay. I see what you did there. Scatino was not present. His lawyer stated that he was waiting outside of the jail for the ruling, so that if his plea was rejected, he could immediately start serving his sentence. And with that, five years and four months after the disaster, he was finally in a cell. And I will not be making any comments. Oh my god, that hurt. The salvage operation was enormous. It took over two years and cost an estimated yeah. $1.2 billion. Beginning in early 2012, they first... So, so they had $1.2 billion to salvage this fucking hunk of junk. But uh, when it came time to uh, compensate the passengers for going through all this shit, they were like, eh, I don't know, man. We're, we're, let me see what I got in my pockets. There we go. Uh, yeah, I got, I got some change here. Spent two months pumping fuel from the ship's tanks. At the same time, they had to pump seawater in so that the balance wasn't affected and the ship didn't slide around. In early 2013, a platform was built under the ship to prevent it from falling further. Sponsons were then attached to the sides of the ship and cables attached to the underwater platform. The sponsons were then dragged underwater and opened up to allow the ocean to fill them. The ship could then roll over properly. By late 2013, the ship was upright once more. 
The sponsons were then attached to the side of the ship to help keep it balanced. It now rested partially above water and crews could walk around safely. By July 2014, the water was removed from the sponsons and compressed air was pumped in to lift the ship. And she was ready to cruise again. This time to a port in Genoa. It was a four-day towing journey to the docks where a two-year process of dismantling and recycling would begin. That same weekend of the towing, Scatino was busy. He was the guest of honor at a white party on an island in the Bay of Naples. He appeared on the front page of a local newspaper, flanked by two of Italy's most eligible bachelorettes. I'm just, I'm speechless at this point. I don't know what the fuck else to say. I hope you all enjoy this. I don't know if enjoy is even the proper term for this bullshit, but uh, fuck everyone involved with this. I'm Teacher Eddie, and I'll catch you next time, fam. And as always, shouting out the Patreons who keep things running here, the Chancellors, Elena G, Alex S, Cuckles, John Alonzo, Naval Colt, The Hollow King, The Principal Tier, Addison Lynn, Blue Tech, Chad A, Chris H, Chrissy Clement, Freeman Stephenson, Joshua Stewart, Kiara, Laura, Lord Gandalf, Moody Kakari, Nathan, Quiet J, Rachel H, Robin, Robin B, and Vijandra. I've been Teacher Eddie, and I'll catch you next time. Fam!